Welcome to Empowering Women, Transforming Lives with Rebecca Hall Greider. In our program each week, we provide the tools, ideas, and encouragement to help you move ahead on your journey, becoming a more powerful and impactful woman in your own life. Now here's your host, Rebecca Hall Greider. Welcome, everyone. We're so excited to have you joining us. And here in the States, this is Halloween. And it means all different kinds of things for um, different people. And a lot of times it's talking about things that scare us or can frighten us or people are dressing up in a whole range of costumes and going door to door. Um, trick-or-treating, and really connecting and sharing with others. And I think it's a really great opportunity to look at some of the masks we might be wearing, ways that we can hide in our life. And here's what I've learned about this hiding thing. We can hide in a role that we play. We can hide behind a uniform. We can hide behind functions or things that we do out in the world, content, information, information, titles. There's all kinds of roles that we can hide behind and keeping some of us kind of secret. And we sometimes think this is actually protecting us. I did that a long time when I used to travel across the country speaking. I would hide behind my credentials. I had a speaking outfit, my power shoes. I had a certain way I would show up and I would hide behind content and information. And what I thought that was doing is positioning me as an expert. I thought it was helping me provide valuable information. And yet if they rejected it or they didn't quite like something I said, it didn't hurt me on a a real personal level because they just didn't see the information or appreciate it. And that's how I went about. But something I noticed as I was going along in my career is that, yes, I was giving great content, great information, but I wasn't necessarily seeing lives change. I wasn't necessarily seeing this transformation in people's lives. And someone spoke truth into me and shared why, because I was puzzled by this. I'm out there speaking, I'm sharing information. I don't understand why lives aren't being changed on a deeper level. And they said, that's because you're hiding. I said, what do you mean I'm hiding? I'm out there. I'm speaking. I'm sharing. I got a little, you know, frustrated or irritated at their response because I'd worked really hard on the persona (laughs) that I had built and being seen in a certain way. And they said, as long as you are wearing this mask, as you're hiding behind these things, they cannot hear you clearly because you're protecting your heart. You're hiding behind this. That's creating a separation between you and the people you're trying to reach in your life. You have to actually lead taking down that mask, taking away those barriers, and really sharing your heart, really connecting truly, authentically, and powerfully mask off, shield off, barrier off, so they can actually truly hear you and what you're called to bring to the world and bring into their life, and they're called to bring into yours. And it was really scary, I remember, when I started to strip away those different identities that I had created and way of being out in the world. But there was also this freedom and this increase in energy and this discovery that I was actually enough to be my own quirky, wonderful self, perfect in my imperfections, being willing to share that out in the world actually started to make that difference and created that difference in my life as well. It created transformation in other people's lives in a lasting way beyond the content and information. That was great thing, that was great to share, but more was needed. And when I was willing to share authentically who I was from that place and then share content and information, it had a longer, deeper, lasting impact. So today, as we're celebrating Halloween and we're looking at some of those maybe fears that we have, ways that we're hiding, I want us to really look at how can we share more of ourselves authentically and powerfully in the world. And I've discovered that is key to fully stepping into our potential, to fully shining in the world. We have to be willing to face our fears, to lean in, to lead that connection be willing to take our masks off and share the gift of who we are with the world. So I want you to think just a moment about this. Take a breath with us. 
beautiful. We get so busy rushing around. It's great to remember to breathe deeply. Beautiful. Those of you driving, please stay safe. Put both hands on the wheels, eyes open, no texting and driving. We want to make sure we get to have you joining us show after show. (laughs) So please take great and wonderful care of yourself. Those of you who are able to, I invite you to lean in. Put both feet on the floor. Really feel that floor supporting you. The chair supporting you. Take these deep breaths in through the nose. Out through the mouth like through a straw. Place one hand on your heart, one hand on your head, eyes closed. Keep breathing, bringing all of you in, mind, body, soul, and spirit. This is your time just for you. I invite you to be fully present. Beautiful. This kind of breathing will actually not only bring you fully present, but lower your cortisol levels, your stress levels, so it's, and oxygenate your whole body. <laughs> it's wonderful to remember a couple times a day to pause and breathe. But in this space, as we're reflecting on unmasking your potential, discovering your true smile, that authentic you, and shining out in the world, just kind of ask the question, are you hiding in some way is there something that perhaps you hide behind a little bit and you're feeling that pull to share just a little bit more of you another dimension of who you are and I want to invite you to stretch and see what that is that thing or those things your friends know about you but you don't necessarily share out in the world Sometimes it's our quirks. Sometimes it's things we've experienced or done or things that we really, really deeply care about. And we separate our heart sometimes from the things that we do. So what are we hiding from a little bit? Or feels like is blocking our potential a little bit. Just kind of see what that information is. No judgment, no criticism. This is just an exploration and seeing. Remembering to breathe. Wonderful. And I want to ask you a question. Thinking about how we've started our show today, our conversation today, what is it that you need today? Well, that will encourage you equip you, empower you to step more fully into your potential to take just a few of those layers down. What is it that you need that will equip and encourage and empower you? And the second part of that is that you are willing to receive. So what is it that you need? Let's identify that. Or some of it, there might be many things, but let's start identifying some of that. And that you are actually willing to receive. Because we have to be willing to receive. Not just see what we need, but be open to receiving it, to bringing it into our life. And in fact, I want to encourage you to be on the lookout for it with great expectation today. That you are actively looking for it. So what is it that you need and are willing to receive. Beautiful. Let's breathe that in. Wonderful. Come back into the room. Eyes open, fully present, and write it down. Write down what it is that you need and are willing to receive. I want you to keep it top of mind. Be on the lookout. Ready to receive. Perhaps you may even receive some of it during our time together. So be open and willing to receive. Keeping it top of mind. So easy to get distracted. (laughs) But remember what it is that you need and are willing to receive. And we're just going to go around our virtual room here and I'm going to invite our guest, the amazing Debbie Montgomery Johnson. If you could share just something that was laid on your heart when we paused 
and breathe for a moment and connect it in. Well, first off, I want to thank you for having me today. Um, Mm -hmm. I feel like my life was your life. And something that I want today is that I realize that I'm the voice, that Mm -hmm. I can be the voice for people that haven't been able to express who they are because of that mask they put up. And I'm determined to not be scared away by naysayers Mm -hmm. and bad comments um, by folks that don't understand our stories. Mm -hmm. And I'm willing just to put myself out there. And that can be a scary thing. Yep. But I'm really glad that we're going to have this chance to talk today. Me too. And it's going to be, listeners, we're going to be candid, authentic, and real in our conversation about this. And uh, Debbie, I just applaud your willingness to lean in, to be that voice, to take that stand for each of us to take our masks off and truly share the gift of who we are, even when some don't understand. (laughs) So thank you for your willingness and very happy to have you on the show today, Debbie. Thank you. Thank you. Listeners, how about you? I know for myself, I just feel a connection and this subject of unmasking our potential is so important to us making the world a better place. This really, this willingness to have candid, real conversations, masks off, and walk beside each other is how we change each other's lives. And life by life, heart by heart, that's how we make a difference. So I'm very passionate about this subject. I'm very excited to have Debbie on the show today. And I want you to get the most out of our time together. So As we go into our first commercial break, this is actually a two-minute moment for you in disguise. It's an opportunity for you to stay present, to breathe, to see what's being spoken into your heart, what is being asked for of you, by you. What is it that you are the voice for, that you are called to stand and express? And what is it that you need support in to do that? So I invite you Resist the urge to run off and cross things off your to-do list. Give yourself these two minutes to really see what's being spoken into your heart. And when we come back, we're going to have a deeper conversation about this. We look forward to talking to you in just a moment. Voice America Women. Your passion starts here. Tune in to the Just Jan TV Show at JustJanTVShow.com. Visionary women's leader Jan Jorgensen is inspiring, practical, and visionary. Jan brings us everyday, transformational, emerging leaders, courageously changing the world by speaking and living their truth. Sit around the table with us for profound feminine wisdom, insights, and connection. Be sure to join us at JustJanTVShow.com. New episodes are every Tuesday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time at JustJanTVShow.com. Rebecca Hall Greider's Speaker Talent Search is looking for speakers wanting to get on more stages. With just one audition, you could open the doors to hundreds of speaking opportunities, reach more people, and expand your impact. Finalists get to audition live in front of leaders looking to fill all kinds of speaking opportunities. Apply now at SpeakerTalentSearch.com. That's SpeakerTalentSearch.com. We look forward to hearing your message. Announcing a powerful new TV channel featuring programs designed to enhance and transform your life. Make powerful connections one program at a time. And by doing so, we can bring transformation to the world. Tune in each week to Empowered Connections TV as we add new programs to help you make empowered connections of your own. Visit EmpoweredConnectionsTV.com. That's EmpoweredConnectionsTV.com. And make the most of an incredible life transformation. For women, the pressure to achieve is stronger, the work hours longer, and the struggle for respect and authority more complex than ever. You want guidance on how to succeed, and you are not alone. You're invited to take your coffee break with Game Changers on Tuesdays at 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 p.m. Eastern for our special series, Game Changing Women. Powerful women leaders will help you make sense of it all, analyze how you can change the game, and share their playbooks. 
Game Changing Women, presented by SAP on the Business Channel. Become our friend on Facebook. Post your thoughts about our shows and network on our timeline. Visit Facebook.com forward slash Voice America. You're listening to Empowering Women, Transforming Lives with your host, Rebecca Hall Greider. If you have a question or comment for Rebecca or her guest, we'd love to hear from you. Please call into the program at 1-866-613-1612. That's 1-866-613-1612. You may also send an email to Rebecca at yourpurposedrivenpractice.com. Now back to Empowering Women, Transforming Lives. Welcome back, everyone. I hope you enjoyed those two minutes and really gave yourself the gift of those two minutes to just be still, breathe, pause, receive, see what's being laid on your heart, and listening. Sometimes we're moving so quickly. That's another way we can hide behind all the to-do things that we forget to actually pause, breathe, and check in and make sure we're actually doing things that matter to us, that matter for what we're wanting to bring to the world. So I'm going to invite you throughout the show to take a moment to check in and pause and breathe as we're having a conversation today. Because my goal as we come through the show and to the end of the show is to equip and empower you to step forward in your life and share a little bit more of you. That's why we come together. That's why we share in the subjects that we share and bring experts to support you on your journey. So we're glad to have you here today. Welcome back. Let's take a breath as we connect in. Beautiful. And I'm going to introduce our amazing guest. You got to hear a little bit of her heart and passion in the opening segment here. And I want to touch in a little bit more about Debbie. She and I actually met at the California Women's Conference where she had just won the Cal- the conference speak off that they did. It was a competition, a speaking competition, and she won. And with that, she had the opportunity to step into a number of roles. And it was so wonderful to meet Debbie and her energy and her passion and commitment to making a difference in another life. And she is doing that in really big and powerful ways. She is now a radio show host in our Voice America family on the Women's Channel. So we're very excited to have her joining us in that capacity. And I'll have her share a little bit more about her show. She also is, I just want to make sure I'm getting this right. She is the award recipient of Women on Fire as an author. She is a number one best-selling author, an international speaker, a business owner. Her background includes being a U.S. Air Force officer, an intelligence officer at the Pentagon, and Defense Intelligence Agency in Germany. So she has this amazing, powerful background, very committed to helping make a difference, taking away and down our masks so that we can truly make a difference. And she's absolutely passionate underlined explanation point about helping you live an authentic, authentic, joyful life with a smile rather than hiding behind it. Please lean in and warmly welcome the amazing Debbie Montgomery Johnson to the show. Welcome. Thank you so much. I can't tell how excited I am to be here today. <laughs> and thank Very, you for the opportunity. And oh my gosh, when I first met you out in, in uh, Long Beach at the California mm-hmm. Women's Conference, I was just taken aback because I had no idea that meeting you guys and the opportunity to host a show or do whatever was part of the speak off. It was just a total surprise and so exciting. So thank you very much. <laughs> Oh, you are so welcome. We love having you as part of our family and being able to um, support you in your mission of really making a difference for women around the world. So congratulations again and very excited to have this moment in time where we can connect heart to heart and really share with all of our listeners today. So I always like to start our conversation with why. Why is this work personally so important to you? Why does helping women in this way matter to you on a personal level? It matters to me because I was the woman behind the smile for years. I was the one who put on that role of daughter, wife, mother, 
I tried to be as perfect as possible in whatever role I had, and I think I was taught that as a you know as a young woman. And I realized that it, after having some tragedies and some setbacks in my life, that that role was not serving me best, and it was actually hurting me and holding me back. And when I had you know an, an incredible loss, actually a loss and a huge betrayal in my life, I realized that. I needed to find out who I was and what I was going to do with my life. And mm-hmm. hiding behind my mask of trying to be perfect and trying to look in control was just not going to do it for me. And I wasn't helping anybody with that either. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. And I know for myself as I've gone on um, just, you know, different times I have found I'm, oh, I'm hiding again. <laughs> there, There's another layer um, that discovering that I, I, I think sometimes that tipping point is a tragedy or a loss that we stop and we reflect and see, gosh, maybe this isn't serving me anymore. Maybe it's time to um, approach life in a little bit different way. And I think it takes great courage. So I admire your courage to take this stand, this being willing to take that mask away, take that layer away and share authentically. And I hope listeners, you heard, guess what? We don't have to be perfect. I heard that <laughs> when you were sharing. So for whoever started that rumor, let's correct it. <laughs> we don't have to be perfect. That it really is okay to be who we fully are. And I wanted to see if you would mind sharing just a little bit of what that betrayal was. I know that you share about some of that in your book and, and you have talked and, and sh- spoken and shared about it, but I'd love for you to um, help our listeners just understand a little bit of that um, online adventure, as you call it, dating adventure, that became such a pivotal, a shifting point in your life. All right. Well, I certainly call it one of my defining moments. <laughs> and it came about um, because my story was I'd been married for almost 26 years and I was working myself. My husband was running a company. And one day, uh, Lou left to go uh, to the west coast of Florida. He was taking a race car over there. And I got a call the next morning saying, it was from my oldest son, saying, Mom, Dad just died. Mm. And I, I, it took my breath away. I, he, Lou had not been sick. I didn't know what was going on. Then I got multiple calls say, from my parents, from uh, the hospital, from everywhere else, saying, yes, Lou indeed had passed away. And I was thrown into having to run my, his company, which I didn't know anything about, I had four children. One was still at home. He was a teenager. I had to do that. And then I had to plan a funeral and bring all my kids back. They, the kids were out of, out of the state and I had to bring them back. And, and my whole life was flipped upside down, but I also had to keep my presence about me because I had to run a company. I had to figure out how to run a company. And I did that for, by myself for six months. Um, and I felt like I was running on adrenaline and just extra energy. I don't know where I got it from because I wasn't sleeping well. That was one thing that I, after 26 years, I hadn't been by myself a lot at night and I would get lonely and sad. And, uh, you know, I'd stay up until two o'clock in the morning and only sleep for three or four hours, get up and go to work again. And my friends were saying, you're not healthy. You're not, you know, mentally (laughs) with it. I was, but I wasn't because, again, I was putting on that mask. I was looking like I was in control and I was doing everything I needed to do to keep the company running, to keep my, uh, my day job going, and the family intact. But inside, I was dying. I, inside, I was, you know, I was so sad that, uh, that Lou had died. I was sad that I was, you know, not doing everything I needed to do as best I could. And then everybody's like, you need a life. I'm like, I have a life. They said, no, you need a life outside of the business, outside of the things that you're doing. You need a social life. Well... You know, I was 52 years old. They want to talking specifically about dating again. I really hadn't dated since Lou and I got married, and that was, I was 28, 26 when we got married, so it was 26 years, half my life I'd been married. And uh, it was frightening to think about trying to put myself out there again. And they said, well, you run an Internet company, you're at home, try online dating. I thought, well, I can... I can do that from the safety of my house and I can, you know, kind of stalk people and <laughs> think that's what you do when you go out and you look. But again, when I dipped my toe into online dating, I wanted to put the perfect profile out there. I didn't want to look like I came with a lot of baggage, which we all do. 
but I wanted to look right. And so that's what I did. I put down that I was a widow. I put down that I, you know, was running a business. I put down all these things to make me look like I was a really good catch. Mm -hmm. And in fact, it probably made me look like I was a really good catch for someone that wasn't, you know, worthy of my attention. Um, Mm -hmm. So long story short, I I did connect with a darling gentleman uh, from London. He was a widower. He had lost his wife. He had a son. And he became my life for two years online. We wrote every day for hours and hours and hours. I talked to him on the phone a few times. Uh, he was overseas. He st- Actually, to start with, he was here in Houston, and then he got a job and w- took him overseas. And we kept in touch every day, and honestly, he became my life, and I trusted him with my soul. I trusted him with my hidden stories. For years, I trusted yeah. him with everything. And Debbie, we we are getting ready to go to our commercial break. So I just want to, we'll come back and we're going to finish um, Debbie's story where you're going to hear a little bit more of where this relationship went. And as we go into this commercial break again, I want to invite you to think about in your life, where perhaps have you put on that perfect um, way of being seen and in coping or dealing with a loss or dealing with things perhaps got lost in that role or lost in that relationship or lost in that function and just kind of explore that a little bit because when we come back not only is Debbie going to complete her story she's also going to share um, some of the shifting that also can take place on the other side so we'll look forward to talking to you in just a moment. This is the Voice America Women's Channel, where your success is limitless. Rebecca Hall Greider's Speaker Talent Search is looking for speakers wanting to get on more stages. With just one audition, you could open the doors to hundreds of speaking opportunities, reach more people, and expand your impact. Finalists get to audition live in front of leaders looking to fill all kinds of speaking opportunities. Apply now at SpeakerTalentSearch.com. That's SpeakerTalentSearch.com. We look forward to hearing your message. Relationship issues? Anxious? Parenting challenges? No more. Learn to live your best life. Tune into Straight Talk with top therapist, relationship, and anxiety expert, Sandra Reich. Learn to transform your challenges into effective solutions. Whether it's relationships, parenting, anxiety, or other traps, Sandra will show you how you can live the life of your dreams. Listen live every Thursday afternoon at 6 p.m. Eastern Time and 3 p.m. Pacific Time on the Voice America Health and Wellness Channel. Have you had a chance to check out Voice America's online magazine and blog, Press Pass? If you love our hosts and shows, check out articles that give an even deeper perspective. Plus, topics about health and fitness, movie reviews, philosophy, business tips and tactics, spirituality, positive thought, current events, and even more about your favorite host. It's just a click away at VAPressPass.com. That's VAPressPass.com. VA Press Pass by Voice America. All access, all the time. Announcing a powerful new TV channel featuring programs designed to enhance and transform your life. Make powerful connections one program at a time. And by doing so, we can bring transformation to the world. Tune in each week to Empowered Connections TV as we add new programs to help you make empowered connections of your own. Visit EmpoweredConnectionsTV.com. That's EmpoweredConnectionsTV.com. And make the most of an incredible life transformation. Follow us on Twitter at VoiceAmericaTRN. Get the lowdown on guests, new shows, and your favorites. That's VoiceAmericaTRN. You're listening to Empowering Women, Transforming Lives with your host, Rebecca Hall Greider. If you have a question or comment for Rebecca or her guest, we'd love to hear from you. Please call into the program at 1-866-613-1612. That's 1-866-613-1612. You may also send an email to Rebecca at yourpurposedrivenpractice.com. Now back to Empowering Women, Transforming Lives. 
Welcome back, everyone. I hope that you enjoyed that moment of reflection and just kind of checking in and, and seeing how her story and her sharing so far is is kind of hitting you. And you might find it's touching some um, vulnerable places within you. And I just encourage you to breathe in, acknowledge and know that you are not alone and we're going to support you through this show of things that that you can do action that you can take and really stepping not only into your power but into your potential so with that we just had um, our amazing Debbie sharing about how she'd met this person overseas and had built this relationship of such high trust over the internet and through phone conversations. And this went on for um, over a year from my understanding. And with that, I'm going to hand the floor back to you, Debbie, and have you share kind of what happened and that changed your life in this. Well, absolutely. And it actually was almost two years. Uh, and over that mm-hmm. time frame, it was really extraordinary to me that I could learn how to trust a person again and, and feel like I could fall in love again. Because I was married for a really long time and and. I obviously wasn't looking for love again, but throughout my life, I would had some deep losses. Uh, there were, I had miscarriage, several miscarriages, and about 11 years into our marriage, I didn't find this out until later on, but I found out that Lou had um, had a, had a, and then he had, had been, well, I guess I'm still kind of caught up in it. There was mm-hmm. some infidelity, and I hadn't heard about it until a few years later. So I, I really was struggling with trusting somebody. And then ultimately he died. So, you know, I realized that love was never guaranteed and it needed to be nurtured on a daily basis. Well, the exciting thing about my my relationship with Eric online is that we talked, or we wrote, we wrote every day. And I found I was much more willing to open up by writing than I would ever be by speaking. So this is the extraordinary thing is over the two years, I kept a record. I kept a journal, an online journal of every text or every email that Eric and I sent to each other. And I have 4,000 pages of what Mm. I thought would be family history. Mm. And they're printed. They're in books now. And um, and that's how I learned to trust again, and it was really, it was so exciting. I mean, every time I heard the, the Yahoo chat buzzer go off, I had butterflies in my stomach, and my heart palpitated, and I had that surge of emotion that came with falling in love again. And that's, you know, over the years, because he knew me so well, he knew what would be important to me, and family was important to me. And love was important to me, but security was important. I needed I, and and feeling needed. And and, and when did this start to shift? Because it sounds like it was all amazing and wonderful, but I know things were not necessarily what they appeared. Well, and and over those two years, he I, I own a business. He owned a business. I know that sometimes you don't get paid for your business until or for your jobs until you're finished with them. And throughout those two years, he had asked me for some money. Now, I'm one of those, what I quote, the damn Yankee who doesn't give money away. But because he had become part of my family, I think we would all do something for, we would all help our families to whatever extent we could. And so I started sending Eric money. Now, did that create a problem for the two of us? Initially, yes. But then it was like, well, as soon as he gets this job over with, he's getting paid, he's getting paid a lot of money, he's coming home, he's going to be with me. And that was the 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 hope that I had in me, that he was finally going to finish his job and he was going to come home with me. So I really didn't see that there was a problem here. You know, everybody says, weren't there red flags? Well, there were probably some yellow flags, and I was well-trained. I was an intelligence officer, a banker, I was paralegal. I had all the training, but the story is that my heart led my head. And that's what happens is our logic gets blown out because our heart wants to believe that the person we're talking to is telling us the truth, that all these yep. things are happening, and that whatever we do to help them is what's going to you know, benefit us in the, in the end. And it wasn't until the very end that you know, when Eric came online that September 10th, almost two years in, and asked me how I felt about forgiveness, that's when I started to feel like, oh my gosh, you know, where's this going? And after a couple of hours, and I have giving him everything I felt about forgiveness, I said, did I do something wrong? You know, now I'm putting it on me. What, what did I do to create this conversation? And that's when he came and, out and said, Deb, I'm going to hurt you, and this has all been a scam. And I'm, I'm hearing those words or, you know, seeing them written to me going, 
that's a lie. I said, are you ill? What's, what's going on here? I said, you've got to be lying. You've got to prove to me now that this has all been a lie, which seems so counterintuitive. But he said, okay, I'm going to come online live on Yahoo Chat. And I'm thinking, for two years you told me that you can't come on live, that we can't Skype, we couldn't do these things, and now you're going to come on live? I said, okay. So here I'm anticipating seeing my good, handsome British man, and on the screen pops up a live picture of a young Dark-haired, dark-eyed, dark-skinned young man who says now his name is Joseph, and Joseph is from Nigeria. Mm-hmm. And instantly, my two years love affair, long distance, was over in my yeah. heart, in my mind, and then my logic kicked in. I'm like, get a picture of that. So I had my telephone with me, and I took his picture, and I'm like looking at him, and he's smiling, and I'm thinking, what is going on here? Well, he tells me that he had fallen in love with me and he wanted it to continue, but he couldn't keep scamming me. He wanted it in, you know, to be out there and, and I'm thinking, oh my gosh. And he, and he says, is it because I'm black and, you know, young? I'm thinking, no, you lied for two years yeah. Yeah. and you took over a million dollars from me. And that's the big <gasps> moment, you know, yeah. I oh. have given him over a million dollars in two years. I don't know where it came from. I didn't have it in the bank, you know, but again, yeah. He was my life, and I was going to do whatever I could for him. Uh, and let's just pause for a moment, because you've shared um, your story really powerfully, a lot of information, and um, some of the things I'm appreciating in what you're sharing, and listeners, I hope that you're hearing this too, um, during a really difficult time of the great loss of your husband and the shock of that and then running a company there's all this stuff that you're kind of busy in and running and it became your life and then on that journey um, you decided to find love and you were willing to find love again and have that trust built and um, lean fully into that only to discover what you thought was a relationship built on trust and supporting each other and really understanding each other ended up not being um, what you thought. And listeners, for all of you, I just want to think about whether it's a relationship or other things, we've had those moments in our lives where the rug is pulled out from under us and what we thought is no longer what is. And we have choices At that moment, once we are willing to see the truth, just like you even shared so beautifully, you wrestled with that. No, you've got to prove it to me. (laughs) This is how it is. Like we can um, struggle in seeing the truth. But once we know that truth, we have a choice on how we're going to respond to that. And what I have seen you do is actually step into your power, being willing to take off some of the masks and be willing to share your story, being willing to stand in who you are and not let what happened to you be something that that governs you that you um, hide behind and add that is another thing to hide behind and so I really appreciate that and in just our our last couple minutes here I'd love for you to share what is it that helps you and helped you at that time and now really continue to take this stand and not only take this stand for you but for others as well Well, it took some time, I mean, because I took my story to the FBI. I did everything I was supposed to do, Mm -hmm. report and let them know, and they were flabbergasted, and they looked at me, and they said, Dad, there's nothing we can do for you, because Mm -hmm. he was out of the country, and I shut down. I shut down for years, because I was embarrassed, I was guilty, I felt guilty, I was ashamed. I mean, I should never have been scammed, but you can't shoulda, woulda, coulda yourself. It happened, and when I told my story once to a women's group here in South Florida, and they all sat there, and I had such support, and heads were bobbing, saying, you have to tell your story, because my mother was taken for 80000 or I was in a Ponzi scheme, not once, but twice, or another was in a relationship with a man in person, and he had another life, you know, up, in, up north, and I'm thinking... We all are going through this, and we don't want to say anything because we don't want to feel stupid. But I'm like, if, I don't, if I'm not the voice for this, then we'll never know how big a problem it is. And I had to, you know, dropping the mask and being that vulnerable and putting your story out was really hard for me. But I had such, I had hands to hold, and I had mm. safety in the people I was talking to. And I knew at that point that that was going to be my purpose for going through this, 
And I had to believe. I had a woman tell me one time, she said, Deb, God let this happen to you because he knew you'd stand up and you would help others. And yes. that just gives me such power to stand up for my own courage and, and to be that voice for others. And yes. every day, as you know, you can hear it. I, I feel so strong when I talk about it, and I realize that that's my reason for living now is when I talk to women that have gone through any kind of fraud or scam, they all need someone to understand what they've been through, not tell them that they were stupid or that they were you know, a victim, because we don't want to be victims. We want to be victorious. We want to be awesome. We don't want to be stuck in something bad that's happened to us. We yep. want to rise, and we want to elevate others with us. We're not supposed to do this on our own. Exactly. And I realize that that's my purpose right now is to lead others again, to learn how to trust, to learn how to tell their story with purpose and with power, and to help somebody else either prevent it or to help those that have already had it happen get through it. Beautiful. And that's Thank a powerful you for- thing. It is. Thank, thank you for sharing. I really appreciate your authenticity, your passion, your heart to make a difference for another. And that's what I heard. I hear this willingness to take that stand that I want this thing to not have power over me or others. And I'm willing to take that stand. I'm willing to be vulnerable. I'm willing to share. That's what I'm hearing you say. You're willing to share if it can make a difference for another. And I want to emphasize how she has shared that this is not a solo journey. We are not meant to do this on our own. And it's okay to reach out. It's okay to let others reach out to you and support you. And just because things happen that perhaps we feel like we should have known better, we should have this or that, you know, should have could have I like how you said that too you know what it is and it doesn't mean that's who we are we get to choose what we bring forth and what we choose to echo out in the world and as we go into this next commercial break these next two minutes just for you I want you to think about what Debbie has shared and spoken into your heart and when we come back we she has an amazing gift to support you on your journey that we're going to share a little bit about so we'll look forward to talking to you in just a moment The Voice America Women's Channel. Tune in to the Just Jan TV Show at JustJanTVShow.com. Visionary women's leader Jan Jorgensen is inspiring, practical, and visionary. Jan brings us everyday, transformational, emerging leaders, courageously changing the world by speaking and living their truth. Sit around the table with us for profound feminine wisdom, insights, and connection. Be sure to join us at JustJanTVShow.com. New episodes are every Tuesday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time at JustJanTVShow.com. Announcing a powerful new TV channel featuring programs designed to enhance and transform your life. Make powerful connections one program at a time. And by doing so, we can bring transformation to the world. Tune in each week to Empowered Connections TV as we add new programs to help you make empowered connections of your own. Visit EmpoweredConnectionsTV.com. That's EmpoweredConnectionsTV.com. And make the most of an incredible life transformation. Rebecca Hall Greider's Speaker Talent Search is looking for speakers wanting to get on more stages. With just one audition, you could open the doors to hundreds of speaking opportunities, reach more people, and expand your impact. Finalists get to audition live in front of leaders looking to fill all kinds of speaking opportunities. Apply now at SpeakerTalentSearch.com. That's SpeakerTalentSearch.com. We look forward to hearing your message. We're making it easier to listen to the Voice America Talk Radio Network wherever you go. In addition to listening live, you can check out information about your favorite talk show hosts, discover new talk show personalities, add shows to your list of favorites, and listen to all our show archives on demand. All from your iPhone, BlackBerry, or Android. Download it from the Apple App Store, BlackBerry App World, or Android Market, and get ready to tune in. The Voice America mobile app, powered by Aircast. The Voice America Women's Channel. You're listening to Empowering Women, Transforming Lives with your host, Rebecca Hall Greider. 
If you have a question or a comment for Rebecca or her guest, we'd love to hear from you. Please call into the program at 1-866-613-1612. That's 1-866-613-1612. You may also send an email to Rebecca at yourpurposedrivenpractice.com. Now back to Empowering Women, Transforming Lives. Welcome back, everyone. I hope that you've been enjoying the show. We've really valued having you connect in with us today. And it's just been a pleasure to have Debbie with us today, Debbie Montgomery Johnson, as she's been sharing um, her story and um, loss and betrayal and kind of arising again and really taking a stand for each of us to step forward in a powerful way. And during this closing segment, I asked her if she could just share um, one more quick piece of really claiming that power again and then she has an amazing gift she's going to share with us um, so Debbie the floor okay is well I want me. people to understand how to be comfortable being mm-hmm. uncomfortable mm-hmm. it's the only way you're going to stretch and grow and some that take that calls for dropping the mask dropping your feeling yes. that you have to be perfect in everything you do stop looking at your friends on facebook and all the you know the things on social media that make you feel like you're not enough and just stand up in your own power find your courage find your purpose in life and that's my gift today is uh the seven steps to standing up in your power it's on my website, which is the woman behind I'll, the smile. Dot com. I'll actually I'll let them know how to how to access okay. that. We have a special, uh, but special I link want today. you to realize that there are seven steps there, and some of them are geared towards the online scammer, but they're all geared towards standing up in your power and your courage. And that's what I'd like people to do: is you know, be strong in your own self again, and then lead others and by having confidence in yourself. I love that. And again, the name of that was Seven Steps to Stand Up in Your Power. And this is a powerful guide to help you move on in your life and step into your power. So what an amazing gift that you're making available to us. I appreciate that. And that there are some things that sounds like in that gift that are very tailored to those who have... um, struggled with fraud and deceit but whether or not that has been the struggle it sounds like there's some really great tips and tools to help us step back into our power and I feel like as we step back into our power we're stepping more towards our potential and taking away some of those layers that can hold us back so I appreciate you sharing about that today and making that generous gift available Listeners, I wanted to let you know that special link I mentioned just a a few seconds ago that we have that gift at. It's at radiogifts with an S dot net. Again, that's radiogifts.net. You'll scroll down to today's date, which is October 31st, and you'll see Debbie's beautiful picture and a description of her gift, and you'll simply click on that and be able to access it. We do have you put in your name and email address so we can stay in touch, so don't miss that step, and then you'll be able to open up this library. And the reason we make a library of gifts available to you is because I want you to have the same access and support to experts and from experts just like I do, because it's not a solo journey. There are great tools and resources you're going to see as you scroll down to October 31st, today's show date, there that are available. It's a library of resources, free for you to lean in and get support real time. So I invite you, peruse that site, find those gifts, (coughs) excuse me, that are supportive to you. And let us lean into you. So again, that is Radio Gifts with an S dot net. You'll scroll down to today's date, October 31st, and you're going to find her beautiful gift, Seven Steps to Stand Up in Your Power. Uh, With that, I wanted to see, Debbie, if you had, just as we reflect back on our conversation and the show today and your own journey, if there's one piece of advice as we send our listeners back into the world that you want to give to them today or you want to share with them or you want to remind them of, I'd love to give you a moment to do that. I just want people to remember that no matter what happens in their past, that it doesn't define them. And Mm. to learn how to trust again and to love again is really extraordinary. And the happy ending for me is that I have remarried. Actually, yesterday was my second anniversary. And Mm. 
happy I anniversary. I was able to learn to love again, and that was, for me, wonderful. But it takes trusting another being, a human being. And, uh, yeah. and I encourage you all to do that no matter what has happened in your life. I love that. Though the past does not define us, we can move forward. And I love, I celebrate with you, happy anniversary, that you have found true love again. So that is really, really beautiful. And listeners, as we look back on today's show, I want you to really receive what has been here for you, what has been spoken into your heart. I hope that you have taken those moments to pause and breathe. So you're actually letting your body process things on a cellular level. It's so easy to run off or to run to the next thing and not have really processed what has been shared and what has been spoken into your heart. This last weekend, I had the honor to officiate my cousin's wedding. And it's the first time I've officiated a wedding. And so I was a little nervous, you know, stretching. (laughs) I want to make sure it was official and legal. That was my job. (laughs) So I'm doing and and, um, facilitating this um, beautiful ceremony. And I had the front seat, in a sense, to watching the exchange, to watching when he first saw her um, enter in his gasp and his pause and his breath. And a tear trickled as he was just held captive as she was walking down the aisle. And this moment became real and more real and more real. And it was really happening. And one of the things they invited me to do and wanted me to do was to remind them to breathe so they could be present and really not just having the wedding, but in the wedding, really experience it. And that's what we can do sometimes is we can miss those moments because we're rushing off to the next thing, that moment that is going to shift our life that is for us. And I believe that there were some of those moments in this show today where something was spoken into your heart and your spirit. And I invite you to take a couple minutes after the show, pause and breathe and let what is being spoken into your heart be received. Don't miss that moment. Let it become part of you. And what I hope it does and I hope it inspires you, is to remember that you are beautifully and wonderfully made on purpose and for a purpose. And I believe, in fact, for such a time as now, be willing to take off the mask. Be willing to let the past go if it is not serving and step forward as you truly are. Be willing to connect authentically, heart to heart, life to life with another sharing from that place that will help you live with the smile not behind the smile that will help you step into your potential and i hope as you go back out into the world that wherever you go whatever you do that you will choose and be willing (laughs) to always bloom where you are planted and shine i look forward to talking to you next week Thank you for joining us this week for Empowering Women, Transforming Lives. Please tune in again for another edition with your host, Rebecca Hall Greider, next Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 11 a.m. Pacific, on the Voice America Women's Channel. And join us for a replay of the show every Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern Time, 2 p.m. Pacific, on the Voice America Empowerment Channel. Have a beautiful week, and may you always bloom where you're planted and shine.